Hey there, Michelle Saxman here and popping on. This is just a quick message that I'm going to post before the next couple of videos. I'm going to begin slowing down a little bit on the posting. Daily devotional is taking a lot of time and although I'm enjoying the journey, I have realized I'm kind of coming into a phase of burnout. And when I was talking to some people very close to me, I realized that I have been posting approximately 520 consecutive days. I started in October of 2020 and it's, I started even a little bit before that. And then I noticed the traction that was going on and I was like, gosh, if this is where he wants me to be and do was doing postings every single day. And I am not the pastor of a church, although I do consider this a ministry and I have truly appreciated this journey and i've always said if i can just touch one person if the message gets to just one then i feel blessed and honored to be a conduit of his light and his love but i'm going to begin slowing down and i'm not sure if it's going to be two posts a week three posts a week i just know that i need to step away a little tiny bit from the daily post kind of allow my heavenly father to restore and renew me as well thank you so much now we're going to jump on into the daily devotional Good morning, Michelle Saxman here and ready to share with you the devotional and reflections for March the 3rd and we are in the Sermon on the Mount so join us in Matthew chapter 5 and just a reminder that Jesus is acknowledging that he is more than he is not abolishing the law he is not abolishing the Torah he is not abolishing the Ten Commandments he is saying I am fully filling and then I say exceeding, taking it further in relationship, taking it from external behaviors to, to really looking and cultivating the internal environment. What are the beliefs that then lead to the behavior? So again, in the Ten Commandments, it was a lot of thou shalt not, and it had to do with behaviors. Behaviors are a reflection of the belief. So in this Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is asking us to take an inside look. So we've um, been through the first couple, and today we're going to start on Matthew chapter 5, verse 31. And it starts with divorce. And it says, it has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must have a certificate of divorce. So I'm going to say an external piece of paper that says we have a divorce. But he says but I tell you. So it's taking it to another level. You know the law as you've been told, as it was said. So tying it to the Torah and um, all the messages that Moses received and carried through, we are now going to say, but I tell you, anyone who divorces his wife except for marital unfaithfulness. So he's given us even more to the law. And again, he talks about the behaviors of adultery that precede the behavior the acting out so if within your body you are contemplating lusting after someone else you need to work there before it manifests into the behavior of adultery and divorce talking about oaths again jesus is saying again you have heard it said long ago do not break your oath but keep your oaths so jesus tying back to the word that was given to moses he is saying but i tell you do not swear at all ultimately what he is saying again going from the intellectual what we know don't swear don't you don't need to take an oath because what he's saying is it's about our behavior about simply let your yes be yes and your no be no be a man a woman of your word and then we don't even have to take oaths so just be true to yourself shooting high establishing that aim toward righteousness an eye for an eye so this is now we're in chapter 38 again i'm just going to touch on some things then i'm going to ask you to pick up your bible and then read it yourself knowing that what we're talking about is jesus along the mountainside the sermon on the mount talking to the people that are following that are gathering and he is saying i am more than the law fully filling what you had heard in the old testament what you had heard about from the prophets fully filling that and inviting you to take it from the physical from the flesh from the behavior to cultivating the spirit that he is about to ignite within them so an eye for an eye you have heard it said 
a tooth for an eye for an eye and a tooth for, for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the cheek, turn to him and offer the other. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak. If anyone forces you to go a mile, go to with him. You guys, this is about going the extra mile, that kind of throwaway line, doing more than is what is expected, kind of surprising them, which really leads us to our next one, which is love your enemies. You have heard it said in the Old Testament from the prophets, you have heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I tell you, we're going to take it further. We're going to take it from here to in here. We're going to take it from an external behavior to cultivating a belief. And he says, I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And I'll just jump down here to the beginning. I mean, to the end, it says, if you love those who love you, what reward will you get in heaven? Y'all, that's easy. It's easy to love those that are already loving us. And if you greet only your brothers more than what are you doing? Do not do as the pagans have done. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. I want to sit on that one for just a moment. So we are in Matthew 5, verse 48. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And I'm going to tell you again, it's not in the external behaviors of, of perfection that the culture likes to judge us by. This is about creating an environment within ourselves, an alignment, an order, acknowledging he is the Lord of all circumstances. So why should we have doubt and fear? Getting our behaviors in alignment with our beliefs, that is being a perfect, a reflection of who he is within us. So again, the Sermon on the Mount, what he's preaching to the people is before, he's kind of igniting the spirit, the fire for the spirit, before he, you know, it's going to be the death, the resurrection, and then the Pentecost, where he's going to ignite that spirit. So he's cultivating that spirit so we can live by the spirit and not by the flesh and the sinful nature. So y'all have a super blessed day. Pick up your Bible, jump into Matthew chapter five, reflect on the words and see how he's speaking to you. Then comment down below and encourage one another. Stay connected to the vine and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.